you walk through the valley of the shadow of hell, you will realize that there is something ahead. Something that lurks behind the dark veil. A veil that is beyond our own comprehension. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond, Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. Holy shit, Brittany's back! I'm back! <laughs> ha! She forgot Ha-ha. about us. Ha-ha. <laughs> back, motherfuckers. <laughs> Can't keep me away. So did you have a good time off? Have no. Been getting... Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Not at all. No. Brittany basically took time off. Why don't you uh, explain? I don't want to uh, well, speak for you. Um, I was, I've been crazy busy with school, which is literally just whooping my ass those past couple of weeks, but I was sick too. So I had strep. That was fun. That's great. Um, it's a yeah, good time. I just started like a whole, you know, I like at the worst point possible. Like I just started a new job not that long ago. Like I have a lot of performances and shit that I've been doing with agents and between that and getting sick and then my schoolwork and everything yeah. and then trying to work this in too. I was like, Alex, I, I bro, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I was like, you're fired. No, like, I was kidding. like, I need, we need to, I was like, I need a break. Like, <laughs> just, just a couple weeks. Like, I just need to, like, recharge and try and get caught up. Cause I had a bunch of papers due at, like, the same time and tests and all kinds of fuck. Oh, oh my God. It's been a, it's been a nightmare. Were you glad to be back? Yeah, I am, actually. I missed it. <laughs> Sweet. And guys, today we're going to be, this is episode 118. We're going to be talking about two fucking bug movies. Uh, one being The Nest from 1988 and... Ticks from 1993. That's right. So these ones are sure to make you crawl. Literally. Or skin crawl, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, it gave me some feelings. Some jeebies, some heebies. Some, some heebies. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was thinking about that. I was like, should I say heebie jeebies? Because like, I always wonder if there's like some secondary reason why that came up. <laughs> probably. And they're like, it's some racist shit it or probably something. Probably is. Like, like, to be honest, like, I mean, fuck, in today's world, I'm like, you know, the orientation of that yeah. word, right? Well, it's like, I always think of that movie, Boondock Saints. Oh, yeah. And he's like, that woman was like, you know, the rule of thumb is like why they named it. They used to beat a woman within an inch of their life. And I was like, oh, oh shit, I didn't know that. So it always yeah. got me thinking, like, all these sayings that we use that we never think about. Like, what do we actually say? Exactly. <laughs> it's gotten lost there's over so, the years. There's, like, so many dark meanings behind quite literally everything possible. Right. So it's, you know, shit that sounds funny. You're just like, oh, that's racist. Like, <laughs> but, yeah, heebie-jeebies, I, could, I feel like, is probably some, like, racial <laughs> fucking like, thing, you know? Well, that's, like, why, that's why I always I say know. flappers. And I had to look <laughs> that up flappers. because... Flappers, because flappers is a uh, 20s, like hipsters, spinsters, or whatever the fuck the dancers, you want to call it. Right? Yeah, they were the like, it was like these people would go have parties and they would dance and yeah. sometimes have sex. And With their like it, fringy dresses. Yeah, shit. they were like, it was like the fucking dirty dancing of 1920. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's speakeasy, isn't it? Right, except uh, what's his name? Was it there? And, and uh, he wasn't a ghost either. <laughs> Fucking Patrick, Patrick uh, Sweezy. Sweezy. Yeah. <laughs> Too soon. He did make pottery, though. Too soon. <laughs> Behind her while they were, like, fingering each other on the clay, I um, mean. I saw a friend of, like, we have this, like, chat this chat program at my job called Hip Chat. Okay. And so we have all these different rooms. And today, one of my coworkers posted in a GIF or GIF. I don't give a fuck how you say it. I yeah, say it, just, it. I say GIF. I so do too. Eat my ass. I don't care. Suck it, people. Suck it. Um, but <laughs> it was of Skeletor behind He Man making pottery like from Ghost. <laughs> I lost my fucking shit. Like I was literally like, no. Nah! <laughs> and my one coworker, like nerdy coworkers that sit next to me, are like, "What?" And I was like, "Look at it and all of its glory." And they were like, "Dude!" <laughs> See, a lot of people got upset. Like, you know, like for those of you old folks that use Facebook still, uh, <laughs> I was like, "What?" Some people always get mad when you use uh, gifts, and I'm like. 
I think it's funny because like it's kind of like a reaction and like you know it's like more than words. I only get annoyed because I use the browser. I don't ever use the mobile app because I hate it. Right. So then it's like a comment and it's just like a little thumbnail picture and I'm like now I gotta click on that fucking thing to see what you're saying. <laughs> if it works. If it works and then otherwise <laughs> it's just a weird picture and I'm like I don't understand. Gotta get with the times, old folks. Okay. But like gifts are the way of life now. And I can never post any back because I don't use the app or whatever so i'm like i don't understand how this i'm just works. i'm waiting for the first digital book all in gifts I'm just kidding <laughs> ready. that's gonna be some sort of famous writer yeah you know? today it was famous giffer today i was taking over the main chat room with like fucking ron swanson gifts so <laughs> so and like everybody talks in these like chat rooms yeah oh wow. we have we have chat rooms for um like our individual teams so like if we have questions and shit like you can post stuff in there and oh, then we have okay. like a, everyone in tempe yeah. <laughs> like, someone's gonna post a big old fucking tally whacker in there we're waiting like <laughs> Like I said, though, I've seen some shit. Like, they've posted some shit in there. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, this is work. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then my two of my coworkers are, like, dating each other. And they're fucking arguing in, in our private room hip what? chat. What? That's Back and not forth. And I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? But it's hilarious. Dude, I like, care. what kind of world do you live in where you I have a job I like think, that? I think they're just joking around with each other, to be no, honest. No, I'm not like, trying to. I'm serious, not making but... fun of them. But I'm just saying, like, oh, that would not s- fly in any other fucking job. They're probably going to start listening to it was a bunch of my coworkers were, like, bugging me about my podcast today. And I was like, here's my Oh, hey, called? guys. How, welcome to the fucking podcast. I, I love them. So Get I your earmuffs on. I was like, we curse a lot and make a lot of really bad jokes. So... <laughs> I'm garden, like, talk about dicks a lot. Pre- so tune prepare in. Prepare your assholes. I talk about dicks a lot. <laughs> Every episode. I, I don't know. I brought it up a couple of times while yeah. you were gone. Oh, good. Yeah. It's because it's because you missed me. Uh, yeah, it's just you know it's tradition. Well, someone. And when do you it. hear your family, Olive Garden. <laughs> It's Olive Garden. We're going to get sued now. <laughs> anyway, guys, I think it might be that time. Horse shots! All right, guys. So as we already told you, we're watching. We watched The Nest and Ticks this week. And uh, I decided that we would do a shot based around one of the characters in The Nest. Now, if you've seen this movie, you'll know that there's a scene in the movie where this exterminator slash bug control, (laughs) doesn't he say it's like bug bug control? control. He's like, they've been around here forever. They'll be here probably after we all blow each other up. You know, but he's frantically trying to put this together when he realizes that there's these like murderous fucking bugs out there. And so his name is Homer in the, and he has his own shop for fucking extermination and everything uh but he's like frantically putting this stuff called dexachlor which is a chemical that he spills onto the floor somehow haphazardly on the ground and then he's smoking a cigarette while he's doing all this and he drops it on the ground and it catches fire and he jumps out and it blows up and there's a interesting story on that by the way when we get to that by the way guys so stick around for that but this one's called a flaming homer so, because he did get burned. <laughs> he did get burned a little bit. <laughs> it's like comically, too. Um, so, the ingredients for this is, and this it's, it's, it's a shot that's layered in this order. And with anything flaming, guys, don't be a fucking idiot. Like, listen to me if you're going to make this shot. I take no fucking responsibility for your inadequacy to make this shot. So, just listen to me, all right? So, the ingredients, you're going to put about half a shot of blue curacao in the bottom then you're going to top it with a half a shot of vanilla vodka then you're going to put just a splash and you're going to spoon it in pretty much so that it layers on top and then you're going to want to light it right away because if it dilutes you're going to put 151 rum on top because it's high proof fucking rum so you light it then you blow Blow it it out out. (laughs) and then you drink it do not put lit alcohol in your mouth, you dildo. You fucking dildo. <laughs> dildo baggins. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do not do it. Do you want your house on fire? Do you want your mouth sewed shut for the fucking holidays? I didn't think so because it's good food. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's how you get ants. I, I get the bucko character that I do on the stream too much coming out. Uh, so you're just turning into him slowly. I, I think so. He's like taking over my psyche. We've accepted this. I know. He's like trying to get out. It's my. It's the all the stuff I pushed oh, under the rug. He's all the staring things. at you too. So <laughs> that doesn't help. All right, you dildos. But 
If you would like to try a flaming Homer, all you have to do is go to longlivethevoid.com and check out our hashtag horror shot section now. That's it for horror shots. Horror shots. So now we're going to go ahead and just jump right into both of the movies that we're going to be talking about this week. The Nest and... Ticks. Right now. time to jump into our flesh and potatoes this week and that is we're going to kick it off actually with the nest from 1988 the story small island town called northport is looking to have tourists only the people aren't the only tourists visiting it's infested with flesh-eating cockroaches will the sheriff save them all god help us all <laughs> I made that because the other one was like... Oh, God, I was hoping so. I was like, oh, if they wrote something like that, great. (laughs) Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I was like, that's so perfect. I love it. Uh, So this movie was directed by Terrence H. Winkless, uh, (laughs) but I saw him in an interview. He did wink. Winkless. He's done a lot of different movies, actually. Very cool guy. I listened to the commentary on the the Blu-ray that I just picked up here for Black Friday. Black Friday. Um, but he did movies like Blood Fist. Uh, he directed all of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers show oh, yeah. from 93 to 95, all 38 episodes, go, go, plus Power many Rangers. more. He even did like uh, the, the, the Ninja Quest one, which came out before the TV show, huh. which was like they didn't have any suits on. They literally were dressed Just like ninjas. ninjas. Yeah, and I don't, God don't, I never grew up watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, by the way, guys, but a lot of people did, so you might find that interesting. I love the Power Rangers. <laughs> I grew up watching Power Rangers. Did you? Yeah, I was I mean, a Power Ranger for Halloween one year. What was that? There was the Giver that came out that reminded me of it, like an adult version of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, only with one guy, which was Mark Hamill. Huh. Played the, the hero in that movie, but the characters and the creatures are very much like fucking Mighty Morphin Power oh, Rangers. Oh, yeah. Anyway. For, so I continue. <laughs> he did a show called Pacific Blue. He's also the guy who helped write the screenplay of the original Howling. Oh, great. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember if he was the one that they didn't keep on, because I think I remember that. But I feel like probably. Maybe. Yeah. This is based on a novel by Eli Cantor. Uh, odd thing about him is that he wrote this out of the blue and only had written two episodes of a show called Armstrong Circle Theater in the 50s. But so he's done some other shit, right? Because his name's really familiar. I looked it up. I didn't find any. I didn't even find any books in Amazon or nothing. Weird. Maybe it's just a different person with that name then. Well, not the first name, but last name. His first and only thing got attention (laughs) it's a pretty crazy thing maybe it was because of those tv shows that it blew up maybe uh but the screenplay is actually written by robert king who wrote for brain dead the not the movie by peter jackson or the one with bill pullman and bill paxton that i love but the political tv show about ants that crawl into people's ears yeah Yeah, i loved that show i thought it was really good writing i forgot about that show i was like that's really pretty funny like i and it was perfect political humor because it didn't cater to either side Mm -hmm. it was pretty much just saying they were both fucked so uh which i liked about it um but he also wrote blood fist full contact dragon fire clean slate with dana carvey by the way we're not worthy no i'm kidding (laughs) that was like his like movie where he would wake up in the middle like and his it would be like a new day and forget everything it was like that uh, fucking Adam Sandler movie, but like... Click? No. No, the one, wait, no. It was like Wrong 50 movie. Days or something oh, like that. Oh, 51st Dates. Yeah. I love that movie. Um, <laughs> the producer for this, surprisingly, it's a Corman movie, but Julie Corman, who is also Roger Corman's wife. Uh, she produced Brain Dead, the one with Bill Paxton and Bill Pullman that I do love. Weird connect there. Also Chopping Mall, Saturday the 14th, and Saturday the 14th Strikes Back, Silence of the Hams, Splatter and Death Race 2050. Fuck is Silence of the Hams. It's a spoof. Oh my god. It's got uh, Dem, Dal, Dem DeLuise in it. I feel like we need to watch it. I've seen it. It's been a long time. Because <laughs> that just sounds amazing. I don't know me. if it's like horror. It's really just a silly movie uh, I vaguely still, remember. I'm just going to look for it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Some of the special effects were done by James M. Navarra. He did movies like Not of This Earth, Saturday the 14th Strikes Back, 976 Evil, and Nowhere to Run. The cast, uh, Robert Lansing, who plays Elias the Mayor, he's in movies like 4D Man, Empire of the Ants, which is kind of funny because the director was kept saying that he couldn't believe that Robert Lansing joined the cast because he's such a higher brood of actor that he, why would he join in this silly fucking movie that he made, uh, which was his first movie, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, the director's. But he did Empire Ants, which make a lot of sense. He's he's no stranger to horror sci-fi. He's also on Island Claws, which is like a crab monster thing. An episode of Monsters TV show. Plus, he's connected to Murder, She Wrote. He did some uh, work on that, which I'm starting to believe that Corman and his friends are the people that basically sign on these people to act in these movies. Always have somebody from Murder, She Wrote. Yeah. Okay. It's weird. Like the casting agent or something weird. Lisa Langlis plays this movie as uh, Elizabeth, the mayor's daughter. She was in Class of 1984, Happy Birthday to Me, Phobia, Deadly Eyes, which is a movie about breeding overgrown rats, which looks amazing, Crazy. and we should probably watch it. Uh, the Man Who Wasn't There, Murder, She Wrote, TV show again, uh, Transformations, which is another movie we need to cover, and uh, Forever Night. It also stars Frank Luz, who is the sheriff in this movie. He was in the Facts of Life, a few episodes, Ghost Town movie, When Harry Met Sally, Star Trek The Next Generation, like one episode, and that's pretty much it. Just a bunch of, you know, one-offs. Uh, it also stars Terry Treus, who is Dr. Morgan Hubbard. She's been in the movies The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, which is not a porn, by the nope, way. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a comedy musical with Burt Reynolds, by the way. It's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, she was also in the Schlockfest uh, Sword and Sandal movie called Death Stalker 3. Uh, Roger Corman's Frankenstein, Alien Nation TV show. She was in like 22 episodes of that and other like movies, TV movies about Alien Nation, which I really want to watch again for some reason because I vaguely remember it. Yeah. Um, House 4, she was also in, and more recently, Black Widows. This also stars Stephen Davies as Homer, the pest guy. Homer P. whatever. Pest his guy. <laughs> Homer P. Lambert or something like that. Whatever. I'm just calling him Homer P. Pest guy. He was in a movie called The Razor's Edge. Walk along. Oh, right, right. So, <laughs> Lords of the Deep, Alien Intruder, Lady Killer, Star Portal, plus. You said labia at first. Labia Killer? Like, what? Jesus. <laughs> No, that's not. That's a, a porn. <laughs> that's not a person. That's a device. <laughs> Lady <Lady> killer. <laughs> uh, he was also uh, in a few episodes of Star Trek: Deep Space Nine and one on the Voyager, uh, on on Star Trek Voyager. Uh, also stars Jack Collins, who's Shaky Jake. Uh, he's the in the towering inferno he was in bewitched tv show bonanza uh movie called jekyll and hyde together again which i remember my dad having on beta years ago and a tv show dallas i believe it was like dallas a, it was like a that jekyll and hyde together again was like a porno kind of thing sweet really uh awesome exposing i'm gonna watch it i remember watch, putting it in as a kid and going oh my god i shouldn't be watching this boobs uh, yeah ditch <laughs> Dirties. <laughs> uh, the nest was his last role, by the way. And he, he died. Actually, yeah, he passed away in two thousand five. I was like, he's old. So, Brittany, now that you've been back, would you please do the honors of telling us what you thought of this fine piece of cinema? <laughs> <laughs> so first I want to start this off with I was very pleasantly surprised with both of these movies this okay, week. Okay, good. So I um at first when you sent me the shit, I was like, Ugh. <laughs> Alex is at it again. Like now he's punishing me for being gone for so long. Piece he's of like, shit. Here's these terrible movies, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> but anyway, no. I was I was actually surprised. This movie, like I, ugh, I fucking hate cockroaches. Like I just I hate them. Yeah, dude. With it's, a passion. I don't like bugs in general. I don't like bugs. Like, but bugs I'm like meh. Like it's not a big thing for me. But cockroaches, I and crickets are like the two. I'm like, I can't do it. They're all spiky and I shit. I can't fucking handle Both of it. Them. They gross me the fuck out. Cockroaches never die. They're like hooks for feet and they like stick into your clothes and shit. No, it's <laughs> disgusting. Like I'm just like Bleh. <gasps> oh, and, and grasshoppers. Yeah. Nope. Anything that can fly at my face or like run really fast at me or whatever. And no, not having it. I don't like it. So I 
literally like had night terrors for like two days like since watching like, the past two nights like really? since watching this about fucking cockroaches and having to like kill them and then i went out to like i fucking shit you not i left to go to work um on wednesday in the morning right. and i'm walking out and i'm walking out to my car and on the wall like underneath my neighbor's window right in front of my car is a giant ass fucking cockroach <laughs> and i was like oh no <laughs> why <laughs> and it's like I, I ran i ran the opposite direction around my fucking car dude to get inside of it and then sat in my window and used water bottles that i had in my car still that were like half full and started chucking them at the wall <laughs> To try and kill this fucking grass or grasshopper cockroach, and then my neighbor like pokes his head out the window, and he's like, "The fuck are you doing?" And I was like, "There's a cockroach." <laughs> the cockroach. You, sh- <laughs> you should be thankful in Florida we have flying. We had flying <gasps> cockroaches. They're yeah, called ex- palmettos. You have experienced one of those. No fucking thank you. Yeah, no thanks. I don't know if I ever. Oh, I can't. I watched a kid bite into a cricket once, <sighs> like snap it in half, Blech. and all this white shit came out. Ew. It's one of those black ones. That Ew. Yeah, we, the we used gross to have ones. on the. No, those are actually friendly. They're nice. Well, yeah, but they're still like big and creepy. They're not as spiky legged anyway. But so I. (laughs) Back to the movie. (laughs) It was entertaining to say the least. I, the doctor weirded me the fuck out. (laughs) Right. uh, The whole time she made me really uncomfortable every time she was on screen. So I was like, ugh. Like it was like, it felt like she was a giant cockroach. I don't know. I thought it, I feel like for like science fiction, like killer weird deformed bug movies like there's a lot of them yeah there is actually. um it's a really big range and it's a really big genre in science fiction slash horror mm-hmm. movies like it's and there's not it's a very limited range so i feel like for like crazy cockroach movies like killer cockroaches this is one that i like i felt like it was a little bit more believable okay it's to a point <laughs> like yeah, well, yeah it gets a little out of fucking control obviously <laughs> but like to a point it was actually like relatively believable um the end i was not a big fan of and we'll get into that later as to as to why but yeah so like both of these movies i feel like for the type of like bug creatures that they were going for which are normally like really small type, sure yeah like especially ticks too but yeah i was impressed with what they did with it there was re- some really cool effects in here the acting was pretty shitty some of it was okay but i felt the most believable believable character to me was the, the doctor but she just made me uncomfortable the entire time because i just felt like she was fucking these cockroaches <laughs> so i was like jesus <laughs> christ <laughs> like what are you doing <laughs> like, like are these your children like i don't understand what's happening is that like is that how they, they've come to be like you you fuck these roaches and they, they those are your kids in this <laughs> fucking cavern i don't get it but yeah overall actually pretty impressed with this movie and like the the caliber that they achieved with what they had, had yeah, yeah. for it like it's pretty fucking good for like sci-fi bug movies like i'll take it like i'd watch this again and like i'd i'd actually recommend this to other people yeah yeah I, i'm glad i bought it actually i i'd never seen it before by the way so yeah i wouldn't hate like and i love the fact that you haven't seen either of these movies yeah so, no which is fun because i haven't either so i'm like yay we're on the same page yeah no i don't i may i might have seen bits of like the tick back in or ticks yeah i was talking about on, like cinemax or some dumb shit I was talking about ticks at work today and a bunch of my coworkers had seen it and I was like, what? Yeah, no, (laughs) I always, part of the reason why I, I, this has been in my back pocket for a long time because Dr. Lovegore, who does articles on the website, he does all these lists and, and I always like go to these lists every time. And this is not a plug to go to our website, but you really should. Shameless. Uh, it is a shame. Maybe it is. I didn't mean it to be that way, but he has a lot of these like scenes from movies that he uses, he uses gifts in order to say what his favorite scene is and then does a little explanation. Well, he picked, he did one with bugs and ticks and this movie were in it. And I was like, Oh my God, I got to watch this shit. So the one that you shared for, for the nest, is that the one you put on Instagram from the dude in the dumpster? Yes. Is that the one? That's a good one. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. They, uh, I don't know. It's when I, but so I heard a lot about this from multiple people other than him too, uh, who had mentioned it before and I just never got to see it. I thought I had, but I hadn't. So I was like, shit, this is like, I watched the trailer and I was like, this is fucking bananas. I was <laughs> like, I'm going to watch this shit like a motherfucker. So I ordered it with like blindly and didn't even like know. Uh, but then I realized it was a, it was a Corman film and then found out it was wife anyway. So I was like, I'm on board. Um, which is kind of funny too, because we just did Piranha. And Piranha 2, the spawning last week. And the funny thing is, is that in a lot of ways, this movie feels like Piranha. Oh, really? Yes, because man fucks with science 
and causes these fish to be fucking crazy yeah. and live in like areas that they shouldn't be and like take over people and fucking kill them. And in a lot of scenes, it legitimately reminds me of piranhas. But, you know, it's the same wheelhouse of Corman. So you figure it's, not, you know, the apple yeah. doesn't fall too far from the tree, I guess. I don't know what the. Right. The, and they're like, this was in the 80s. Like, right. Well, 2000. And, and Piranha was 78. So it was literally oh, like 10 the, years oh, yeah, later. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm thinking like the remake, I think. The whole th- style of it like that you know man versus nature in some fucked up way they try to fix it and they fuck it up and then it causes all this fucking crazy shit to happen so science literally fucks with it and then it and it bites back literally to the bone through the muscle (laughs) like actually the muscle is pretty much still there in these in this movie so yeah very similar but anyways this movie is pretty ridiculous in a lot of ways and and all the the greatest ways, I think. Uh, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. Right. But I actually really like it, so it's it kind of fits into my weird shit. It's cool <laughs> because it, it attempted to do some special effects in it, even if it at times it was really bad. <laughs> and yeah. I can respect it for effort, though, for sure. So, and we'll get into more on that on the spoiler section, but it's it's pretty laughable, guys. Like, if you like like a little bit of gore and like silliness, uh, it, it, it will make you laugh a little bit. There is some animal uh, deaths in this oh, movie. The worst. They don't really show it. They the just one sh- they do. No, they only show it. At- oh, sort of. Yeah, uh, I know yeah. a little bit about that too. They didn't. No animals were harmed. Yeah, I figured. I just I didn't like it. So you know, but, I wouldn't. I know. I'm sure when you were watching, it, you're like, Brittany's gonna kill me. No, Christina was like pissed off. She was like, I'm not watching. I was like, stick around, you yeah, bitch. This shit makes me mad. I'm <laughs> like, you can kill the fucking cockroaches. 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 Somebody out there is really pissed. You said that though. Whatever. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> some of the creature work in this were, you know, it moved really horribly. <laughs> <laughs> but and there was, but it was like really cool in the same respect because it just looked so it's fucking, fucking great. crazy. You sound all great about it. Like some of the creature work in this like moved like really horribly. <laughs> <laughs> it did though. Like if I'm being honest, like. Yeah. <laughs> but even still, again, I don't know. It gets an A for effort, and yeah. like. It, it pushes the number up a little higher if I were to give it a score. But, you know, some of the acting in this is, you Shit. know, eh, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Um, you know, it, it does go cuckoo bananas by the fucking end of the fucking movie, like batshit fucking it crazy. It really does go cuckoo bananas. And, and, it, and it really is worth the wait, like when you get to that point, because it's like, oh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> but it never really goes fully unhinged. But there is some really cool stuff in there but anyway the pest guy in this movie i thought was kind of funny he was funny he wasn't like i i'd say he's like one of the more interesting characters but they never really drew that much light on him uh so he just kind of comes in and does his like quick little funny joke and then pieces out yeah uh some of it's like funny some of it's kind of like giggle it doesn't land all that well no but he did a good job yeah like he's one of the most believable characters right like i enjoy he made the overall tone of the film work more because without him it would have been too serious right like there's jokes in it but they just would have not it would have this the tone of this movie would have been fucked the chick that you're talking about the dr hubbard chick uh she is really kind of creepy and uh we'll get into that in the spoiler sections (laughs) uh like she delights in all her wicked science her weird science (laughs) yeah her weird science but um a lot of this stuff really does help to drive the plot of the story so it it makes sense by the end of the thing and you know it, it also gets us to the show pieces of gore that we always talk about uh, that are pretty decent. So, but if you had to watch a movie that if you're looking for like one of those weird eighties gems that you would like to see and you like science, you know, versus like nature or whatever the fuck, I think it's a good movie to watch. Is it a 10? No. no. Is it an eight? Probably not. No, <laughs> uh, but it is definitely somewhere in the six to eight category in the cheese factor <laughs> and fun. So, it's fun. But there is some trivia on this movie that I did find. Technically watched the movie twice <laughs> because I did the... Uh, oh, the... Yeah. The the extras. Yeah, the commentary. The so. commentary and everything. Yeah. So they shot this movie in 25 days, which he had talked about. He was like, they don't make movies like that anymore. He's like, this was like a legit movie. Like, we took our time. Nobody makes 25-day movies like that in independent films anymore. Like... They get their red camera and then they set it up and they do a shoot for like a week or two and then they're done. Mm-hmm. 
but you know this was film i guess back then so you know they really they had to make sure everything was right and if something fucked up well they couldn't fucking fix it julie corman who is the producer of this movie as i mentioned is roger corman's wife she actually got the job for the director uh winkless uh, to do this movie, she said that she really believed in his his what he did, and this is his first debut film because of it. So uh, she gave him a shot, and uh, he owes he said he owes his career to the fact that they gave him a shot. So and he's always forever grateful. Also, like Brittany was saying, she hated the fucking animal thing, mm-hmm. uh, but no animals were harmed. He mentioned that like twice. Uh, he did say that you know the cat scene was like just it's the worst food coloring. And I, but I, but why its foot was like stuck there? Yeah, I don't. Mm-mm. Like I'm like traumatized from that scene. <laughs> it looked really fucking like it was losing its mind. Like I don't, I did not, I did not like it at all. And Austin yeah. neither. Like he and I were both like very visibly uncomfortable. Yeah. Like in I that mean, moment, because I was like, mm. yeah. Like, like over, he's looking at me too, and we're just like, oh god. If you think of it as like someone's pet, yeah, it's kind of like dramatic for that cat. Which I always complain. I'm like, why don't they ever fuck with cats? Like, why is it always dogs that they got to kill more movies? <laughs> there you and go. then I get, I get my scene where yeah. they fuck with a cat, you but put then that it was out like there. over the top. And I'm like, ah, why? Sometimes like, thoughts happen, fuck, Brittany. man. I mean, everybody who has seen Cannibal Holocaust is still traumatized from that shit, so. Well, he didn't get hurt, supposedly. Yeah, the cat was, was fine. The dog was fine. But the roaches, not so much, I don't think. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, they killed those. A lot of them. I think they stepped on a bunch. Uh, speaking of which, by the way, the cockroaches in this movie, interesting story here. They thought that the Wranglers would just like grow them in a lab somewhere and like have b- oodles and oodles of them. Like the director said this, Winkless. And he said he found out later that the whole, the people who were doing it was a family that would go out in the middle of the night in Van Nuys and pick them up at night every single night for like six seven months why i know isn't it crazy why do you do that (laughs) so like i don't get bug wranglers (laughs) i was like what the fuck like Like, those like big hissing cockroach things though like those are kind of cool yeah and a madagascar those like i've held one of those before and like let it crawl on me and it's weird but they're slow they're real slow yeah but those don't bother me like and i think they sound cool except when it hissed at me and they taste like raisins they do taste like raisins I've tasted a cockroach. I was before. kidding. Did no, they I've really? tasted one. Yeah, <laughs> I've had one. Well, it could have been the chocolate, but I feel like, but all the like, bugs that I've tasted in chocolate all They're taste the same. They're just chewy like that. They all taste the same <clears throat> to me. A little sack. Because like, I've had open. chocolate covered ants, I've had chocolate covered crickets, and I've had chocolate covered cockroaches, and nope. I feel like they all taste the same. They all nope. do taste like raisins. I'm ants good. especially. Ugh. Ants totally taste like raisins. I'm done. Nope. <laughs> I know, I hate them so much, but I was like, I'll eat you, bitch. <laughs> like, put some chocolate on it, and I'll try it. Dude, they had, um, like, there were some scenes in the movie, guys, that they had a lot of roaches, though. Mm-hmm. And some of them that didn't have so many. So he said that, like, you know, as they were filming, they were losing cockroaches because they would do a lot of this stuff on a set so that they wouldn't lose them. Some of it they wouldn't, you know, uh, but they would, like, it would be thinning them out like as they went. Yeah, so, they used a couple of repeat shots. Right. Yeah. They they kind of they used a lot of fake ones too mm-hmm. to kind of make you know the scene work as much as they possibly could. But they said that they used so many roaches in the studio because they used the the Corman uh, studio in order to shoot some of the scenes, and they said that they used so many that they actually six like. After the movie was made, for years after, they were they, finding roaches. They were still they were still infested with roaches. They brought in like six exterminators <laughs> after the movie was done. I could and not have worked still, on this movie. He was like, "I bet you, whatever it is today, like whatever, I think it's an apartment complex. They probably have a really bad amount of fucking cockroaches." Yeah, they're like it's like the bug man says, like you can't get rid of them. You can control them, but you're not gonna fucking ever get rid of them. Right. They're just gonna keep coming back. I mean, they're. They're gonna last. I mean, mm-hmm. you can kill them with fire, apparently. Apparently, uh, but but same with ticks. I yeah, <laughs> fucking new. Um, all the close-up shots in this movie. So when they're like picking stuff up or handling roaches, uh, they're either the hand wrangler, the like roach wranglers, uh, or the director himself. No so, one else wanted to do it. Yeah, he said that when they shot this film, they did not do any pickup shots while they were filming on the first unit. And then they had the second unit, they would do all the pickup shots, like, so it wouldn't be 
so bad. So, mm-hmm. but he's like, most of those shots are me and my hand, except for one time where Lansing was like stuffing the ro- roaches back in the bathroom door at the end. Uh-huh. And uh, so that was the handler. So, also, this movie was released the same day as Friday the 13th, part seven, The New Blood. So, it came out on the same day as part that movie. Seven. Yeah. That's the one where they, it's a um, Jason fights a psychic girl. Mm. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous and uh I, it's not my favorite but i still like it you've seen it though right i think so like, it sounds familiar but yeah, I, I feel oh, like i probably have you need to watch all those again if you have it i well i know i've seen all of them but i'm just like it's yeah been, you don't know which one's which it's been so long yeah <laughs> like literally well, no we should do those though we already did our 13th episode we did all of them? All of them. Y'all are fucking nuts. <laughs> um, also, in this movie, there was two scenes in the movie that are stock footage uh, that Corman had just laying around that he wanted to use to spice up the movie a little bit. And, of course, Winkless was like, yeah, whatever. He's yeah, like, whatever. <laughs> he's like, wrap it around it, whatever you got to do. So one was the blue truck that goes over the bridge where the guy's, like, taking the dead bodies back to the morgue. Which makes sense because I was like, this doesn't fit. There here. was a blue truck, I guess, that they drove off a bridge and blew up. And they wanted to use it. So he was like, yeah, all right. I'll just have him driving down the road in this blue truck. All no, right. <laughs> and then he goes over because the bugs get him. Uh, and then the second, the second one that they use is when Homer spills the flammable uh, ah. solution on the ground and then drops his cigarette and it blows up. When he runs out, that exterior shot that they have is stock footage. Makes sense. So they didn't actually shoot that. So they just put it in there. Hmm. And it works because it's like by the water. Mm-hmm. So they were like, whatever. Because they all live on an island town. Yeah. Which apparently this movie was shot in like Oregon, Santa Monica, and like... I forget Weird. where else, like all these different places, and they just seamlessly pie- pieced it together through movie magic. Movie magic. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, there was some other stuff that he mentioned throughout that I might think about as we're going. But so, do you have anything that stood out to you that you might want to bring up in this movie? That yeah, okay. So I was super grossed out and uncomfortable in the beginning, the opening scene when the nine one one operator chick or whatever she is calls the sheriff and he like wakes up and he they show the cockroach that's in his coffee oh yeah and he's like walking around the house and this cockroach is like in his coffee and just like swimming around in there or whatever and he keeps trying to take a sip of it and every time we're like mouse and air like yeah (laughs) and then all this like he gets off the phone and then he goes to take this huge swig of his coffee and mouse is like no <laughs> he spits it out. It's fucking hilarious. He just spits this coffee all over the place with uh, this fucking roach. And I was like, no, uh, why? It's because of shit like that that I check my drink every time. All I the look, time. Yeah, every time. Constantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same. Like, I'm like, Bleh. but yeah, like that was a, that was one of those scenes where I was just like, it made me extremely uncomfortable. There's Ugh. a couple of those with this movie. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, that was a no, bad no. one. But uh, like, I thought that, like right away, which is kind of funny because it was like how they, how they handled it because it was like a nice little introduction into his world his world yeah. and like what he's about in his character but then also like the infestation that's about to happen because you see all of them like in the back of his toilet and shit too right, like yeah and you're like really bro you don't see this shit <laughs> well he did reach in the toilet yeah. and you see him pull one out and he's like ah get it off my hand yeah, and then he tries to get homer and he's all yeah. like <laughs> and that's winkless him. the director by the way doing that Oh really? He was getting used to like picking up cockroaches so much yeah, he's just like, to it. throw them back in the scene because he was like, "Oh shit, there got to be a lot of roaches," and they were running everywhere. <laughs> so, just um, a broom. <laughs> one scene. There's a scene that I, uh, I got to bring up. There's like a so the sheriff he goes to the to the the, the diner after that to go meet the girl that he's been kind of seeing in town because there's slim pickings there for either side, male or female. Um, but these two meet up and he goes there and she gives him a gift, which is a pair of sunglasses, because I guess he couldn't reach her the day before. He was like, oh, I was wondering where you were. And she was like, I got you a gift. Mm-hmm. And it was a pair of sunglasses. And he puts it on like he's fucking Terminator or something. <laughs> and then one of the patrons is like, you're a mean sheriff, huh? <laughs> he's like, that's right. And the dinner girl says, you going to drop by later? And he said, yeah, after I clean up these mean streets. I was like, oh, God. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. It was so forced. <laughs> it was and so just bad. 
I oh I know I did the same shit. I was like, mm. even the director in the middle of the fucking commentary goes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he really did. He's like, yeah, oh, like because he knew that it was really bad at that point. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, anything not else? All winners. <laughs> anything else that sticks out? Not necessarily your favorite scenes, but um, well, yeah, those those things. horrible scenes with the animals. Those, oh those shit. yeah, those were just shit. Um, the poor fucking German Shepherd that's like this beautiful ass fucking dog and then you know the cockroaches come and eat him or whatever they do and then you just see this creepy like still has muscle attached to it for whatever reason right like, well you see the dog like on it he's on like a, a, he's, stake, he's a stake and chain on a leash, yeah or on a chain yeah yeah and then but they show him like he sees this these bugs coming towards him and he's like whimpering and scared and I hate that I don't I, I that's what makes it worse for me and then the scene with the cat, when, like, this bitch has, like, meat in her hand that she can use for bait for these fucking cockroaches. And then all of a sudden she sees this this kitty and she's like, oh, here, kitty, kitty. And Mouse was like, that fucking whore. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, damn. I'm like, okay. And I was like, but yeah, you're right. Like, that fucking whore. Like, fuck her. And then all of a sudden you see, like, this cute ass, you know, it was a cute they cat. They put it in a glass cage or something. A plexiglass, like, box, yeah. right? They Like, they hold it in there and until all these cockroaches come up and then they open the fucking door. So the cat can't get out, but the cockroaches can get in and eat it. And then it's, like, this weird, like, fake cat or whatever the fuck it is, like a puppet or something that they use well, the in ca- there. We talk about the cat freaking out in there for a the, little bit. Yeah, it was the like, cat was freaking out, like, the noises that are coming from there, like, accurate. He's like, it was just food coloring, and I'm like, yeah, but mm. I think more people are upset of the fact that how distraught the cat was. So it, that was an actual cat? Yeah, it was a real cat in there. Makes, not, mm. not a dead one, like, no, the, yeah, I'm yeah, talking like, about when it was, like... it's flailing around, I like, kept watching it stuck. its... It's paw. It's paw stuck there. Yeah, like it was claw and it was like. Rawr, rawr, yeah, rawr, rawr. I did not. I did not like it. Like yeah. I was so uncomfortable. And I've seen a lot of it, like a lot of movies, with, obviously, with, like a lot of scenes when they use animals because I complain about them every time. Right. But like that was one of the hardest ones to watch. I got to mention, like, I, I agree. Like, it was a little hard to watch. I was like, oh, no, kitty. It was rough. Um, But I will say this, though. First of all. Okay, so the dog got eaten by roaches before this, right? And they're testing out the theory to see what it was to set out this trap. But they—it's not like the cat's dead or anything, and it's alive. Why? And it's already eaten people. These roaches have already eaten people. So them putting a trap and then standing around it on either side and watching him get eaten is kind of stupid, right? It is stupid because you think about it, you're like, well, what led them to the fucking when there's a bigger meal on either side of the box? Why do they go to the cat? Why would they go to the cat? Exactly. I don't I remember if she sprayed anything on them or so, on the cat no, or anything. I don't think she did. I don't think she did. Like I was, I was equally just as confused by that as you were. I was like, I was plot like, hole. Why? Plot hole. Because <laughs> they're literally just fucking standing there. There's a like. Why would they not just go immediately to eat them? Like, it kind of disconnected me because I was like, why would they? Okay, all right, whatever. Yeah, I did the same thing. I just was like, plot I, driving. Yeah, I was like, if I keep nitpicking this, I'm just gonna be pissed about the whole movie. So <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna stop. Yeah, it's not gonna be a real movie anyway. But yeah, but yeah, um, I was I did the same shit as you. So there was a scene where there's a girl that brings the the librarian lady some pancakes. I guess it's oh her my daughter. God. That's her she niece. like she yeah. has this tray full of pancakes and <laughs> literally like an entire thing of fucking syrup is all over the tray. She's so stupid. And she's spilling it everywhere and then she brings it to the lady. She even drops some pancakes on the floor and just puts it back mm-hmm. and then gives them to the lady and she's got these like headphones on like those uh the battery operated radio headphones that they used to have back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And she spilled all this syrup all over the floor and it's dripping on her legs and stuff. And like she after she hands it to her, she's like, are you good? And she's like, oh, you're so sweet, whatever. But there's like a lot. She like they pan down to her feet and there's like a fuck ton of fucking syrup, syrup. all over her legs. Yeah. Like ridiculous amounts. Like someone just poured a whole fucking thing. And she's just like acting like she's got an itch on her leg or something. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, was what weird. the fuck? <laughs> That was a lot of fucking pancake syrup. Then you see the drizzle go to the fucking... All the way down from the kitchen, all the way upstairs. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And, and, then, the, and then the old lady dies. Yeah. She, she gets, gets eaten. She gets eaten by cockroaches. Um, and the girl can't help her because she can't hear her. <laughs> so, so, and the story is, by the way, guys, these roaches, they developed a roach 
They, they, they created these in the lab to make roaches be able to eat other roaches to try to kill pests so that people wouldn't have to deal with roaches anymore. And they were going to test it out in this island town. Of course, it's an island because roaches don't swim across fucking oceans or, or lakes or for that matter, I guess. I mean, they float on the water, but right. anyway, I'm not a bug expert, but of course, you know, it, everything goes wrong because these roaches are supposed to die after the first time they're born and then just eat the other roaches, find the nests, assimilate, and then eat all the other roaches. Assimilate. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, it just, of course, they find out that the, the roaches are immune uh, to the, uh, you know, the only spray that would kill them. And their babies, their eggs that they lay are immune to it. So then, of course, they become vicious fuckers that are like eating flesh down to the fucking muscle. So <laughs> it's crazy. OK, so let's talk about some of our uh, the most standout scenes. Did you have any? Yeah. Can we talk about how fucking creepy that doctor is? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. When she after they've dis- after they've murdered this poor cat and they've discovered like she has her little roaches that are stuck with the cat corpse right inside of the fucking plexiglass box and she's got her hand in it through like you know she's got the big rubber glove on or whatever yeah and she's got her hand inside the the thing and she's like they're they're crawling on me (laughs) and then she's just like infatuatingly like staring at these roaches and the dude's like the mayor or whatever is like okay He's like staring at her, and you can tell he's all like creeped out and shit too. It's like, well, and then get she's your like, fucking hand out. And then she's like, "Oh my god, they're biting me." She's like looking. She does they're, look like she's getting off on. They're this. biting me. Like she literally, yeah, she looks like she's about to cream her panties, and it's super uncomfortable. And then the guy's like, "Well, pull your hand out. Pull your hand out." And then he has to physically like remove her fucking hand, <laughs> and she pulls her hand out and is covered in fucking bites and blood and shit. And, and he's like, like, "My god, my god." <laughs> <laughs> by jove <laughs> by jove your hand is destroyed first she's like smiling when the cat gets eaten viciously she was she was horrible i did not like her at all she yeah was like, no she was a weird like she sold her character it was pretty funny though i kind of laughed i was like this bitch is fuck crazy mm-hmm. man. <laughs> like i was like really um that's why i said i think that's how they she created these roaches she fucked them well, I got to mention Those the, are her babies. the roach cat is pretty awesome. The roach cat was pretty awesome. Roach cat was badass. Uh, cat. It's really moves stupid and uh, doesn't look right, but no, <laughs> it no. has like long antenna that come out of its top. Yeah. And then it's got like the mandible, like pincer Pincers, mouth. Yeah. Uh, is it is it mandible? I thought mandible, but it, mandible is like a hand, but a claw. So, but it is like a claw, I guess. It's pincers, whatever. Whatever. But it comes out of its mouth, and it's like making all these weird noises and stuff, and cleaning itself. Um, yeah, I was doing the weird cat thing. Right. <laughs> the leg. <laughs> I thought I thought it was pretty funny, and they do the old uh, trick in the book, you know, where it's like you know they they take in a stuffed animal and pretend like it's attacking you. Yeah. <laughs> Real cute. Which is pretty funny. He like, and the chick lets her bite, lets her, uh, bite his neck. Like she waits a little bit before she sprays it with the fucking, uh, what was it? The fire extinguisher or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck, bitch? Just get that off of him. Yeah. She just like, doesn't want to kill it. Like you could tell, she like, does, trying that's to... what I'm saying. It's like her babies. It's fucking Fast weird. Fast forward to the end. When she gets all weird. Yeah, the, what's the company Intech? Intech? Yeah. I think so. I was, I was thinking Inatech. In, Inotech, right? No, that's like fucking. I think it's uh, Intech. Office I, and, space. I think it, oh yeah, I think it, it is office in space. A, in, <laughs> it, yeah. I think it's Intech. I N T E C. Yeah, Intech. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. I know. I was, I've been sitting here for the last ten minutes trying to remember what the name of the stupid <laughs> like fake company is. Uh, what else? What other scene did you have? So the diner scene. So like the leading into it. So the the gif that you posted is great of the the weird cook that's out in the dumpster. I don't right. Know what the fuck he's doing in the dumpster, mind you? But he like pulls puts his hand down to get something or whatever the fuck he's doing. He pulls his hand back up and it's covered in fucking cockroaches and then they're just like eating him and all of a sudden you see all his hand and shit like just splurting blood everywhere <laughs> and then he's just like covered. <laughs> oh, his like, hands, yeah, like fuck? his hands. He's got fake ones on it but it, yeah. apparently, by the way, that's his brother. Oh, the really? director's brother. So, oh, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, he said he didn't really talk like that guy. Yeah, but then, oh, okay. <laughs> But then on the inside, the the girlfriend or was the, the girlfriend, the waitress or whatever, um, she's like fighting off all the cockroaches, and I think it's funny because she's talking to them like they're they're shitty customers. 
when she's doing it. I love that scene. I just thought it was really funny. Like her, I do too. like her commentary was just really funny and like how she was like playing off of it. Like, oh, you want more coffee? Like she's like pouring coffee all over him and smacking him with a spatula and like pouring him in the blender. Like everything she's fucking doing. But she eventually like is like just swarmed and overwhelmed and she locks herself in the fucking deep freezer or the, freeze to death. the freezer and the freezes to death. That was sad. You know what's funny? I actually that scene in particular reminds me of Gremlins. Oh yeah, because the mom fighting the gremlins yeah. in the kitchen, and I she puts them that. in the. She, they even use the blender. They like got all this like havoc going on, and yeah. she's like pouring coffee and shit, and it's like kind of humorous. Like that's what it reminded me of. I yeah. like that actually. Uh, the director Winkless said that he that was one of his favorite. Terrence H. Winkless it was his favorite scene. That's a good scene. I thought so too. Uh, that was one of mine actually. So the other only other thing I could think of is uh, well, there's two, uh, but the the. They have the mayor, Roach. Oh, yeah. Which was pretty cool. <laughs> I think it was better than the cat Roach. I totally uh, forgot about the mayor, Roach. But, like, her dad, how, like, sacrifices is. himself unnecessarily for fucking whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Shuts himself in the door. If it's that <laughs> of a dire situation... Get out of the house. Whatever you got to do, I like know. you're not gonna fucking kill yourself for what? So your daughter like gets killed later? Like avenge me? Yeah, like, like I don't, I don't get, I didn't so get weird. it. But he dies, and apparently the the roaches are like rapidly fucking evolving, and they're taking when you get bit by these things and whatever's left over, they can take over your body and turn it into some gigantic mayor roach. Yeah, uh, I don't know how I forgot about that because that scene was pretty dope. Yeah, she like sees him. She's like, Dad oh my god and she goes up to hug him and she feels his back is wet and she's got blood on her hands and then he's just kind of staring there like frankenstein or something and then uh he pulls his leg out of his foot as shoe out of his like his feet yeah like his his little like his skin yeah like his skeleton skeletal foot bone just fucking like comes out of his shoe and is like spilling grew everywhere and which, sipping on cockroaches I thought it was funny. And then like his like sweater rips open. He's got this gigantic fucking <laughs> roach on his chest. Did you notice me that? Of, um, what is it, Men in Black? Oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh my god, it made me laugh. It looked like a scarab or some shit on it his did, chest. It was like weird. he was a fucking scarab superhero. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Yeah, it was pretty bad, but also, like, fucking excellent. Uh, it was cool. And then, like, his face, like, you see his chest rip open. And then his, like, body's, like, he's completely nude now while skin and skin, bone. Yeah. Uh, just this, like, nasty fucking falling apart. Like, pieces of his face, like, his face rips open and mandibles cap come out of his mouth. And then his daughter's, like, screaming no. And she, like, pulls the shotgun out and shoots him in the face with it. She shoots off his like left shoulder and like arm first. Really? And then shoots him in the stomach area. And then that's when she has to get the last um shell off the ground, which is like right in front of his that's feet. Right. So she bends down and she like she's and she sits down on the ground and she loads that shell into the shotgun and then she shoots and shoots his head off. Yeah, like it's all like this like it, it moment, you know. But it was cool. It like, was cool. Like there was a lot of like they said that in when they did that scene that there was a lot of fucking blood everywhere in oh, the I'm house. Sure. He said they used like rubber to to like try to soak it up or something like before, like they pasted it everywhere and they figured that would do it. And he said it was just so much, <laughs> no. it was ridiculous. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> How about those uh, big daddy testicles that hang the granddaddy testicles that hang like <laughs> egg sacs in the cave? <laughs> She's all rubbing on her. They were like the cave had balls. Like, it was <laughs> yeah, the weirdest I shit. I, I was, was like, like, look out, there's a giant granddaddy in there, Christina. If they didn't have hair, if if it would have had hair on it, it would have been even better. I but. wish they did. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. There's like three balls. Like I was like, I don't think that's how cockroaches grow. I don't know. It was like a new breed, so uh, they yeah, were trying to know. say. It was weird. I did not like it. They're just like I. Th I thought they were balls too. So I was just like, "This is funny." I didn't like the. Okay, so getting into the end, I did not like the queen. Okay. Yeah. All right. It was weird. I thought it looked cool. It, it just looked didn't move cool. right. It didn't move right, but it looked cool. It, but it I, was it all didn't... like it looked like a puppet. Like it did. It was a weird animatronic that like didn't work. You know what I mean? Like it was like a busted down Disneyland prop, and I was like, <laughs> "This is strange." Um, it's a small world. world. <laughs> yeah, um, but it didn't fit the story. I can agree to that. 
to me at all. It didn't fit. It wasn't like nearly cockroachy enough. I mean, I, I liked it, like because like yeah. the scientist, Doctor Hubbard or whatever, the fucking Doctor Hubbard scientist chick, whatever, the crazy one that likes to fucking fuck cockroaches. <laughs> She like walks in and she's like she sees the granddaddy ball sacks all hanging there and she's confronted by this giant skeleton thing like thing and that's got like five skull human skulls on like it. Like six or seven all yeah. over its body. It's weird. <laughs> and then she uh she's like admiring it, like, you know, at first and then she was like scraping some juice off the balls, I guess, to try to like and then the, it grabs her and it rips her arm off, which I thought was pretty cool. That was pretty funny. And then it fucking pulls its mandibles out or its fucking pincers, pincers or whatever and, and clips the top of her head off. <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad, but it was also really cool. Yeah, when it when it kills her, that was pretty dope. But I just thought the the actual like queen like creature thing, I was disappointed in because I was like, but it could have been so much cooler. Well, you know, what's funny, too, is that originally they... Um, that that creature in particular was supposed to be uh, thinner and smaller. It looked like a, just a skeleton. That's cool. And they were like, someone was like, I think Roger Crumman said, it looks like a basketball player. What are you doing? <laughs> like the way that it was so skinny and like tall, they were like, you need to add stuff. So they went back and like added a bunch of stuff to it. And that's why it ended up what it looked like. That makes sense. And they still had the arms all moving stupid and shit, but yeah. like it is kind of bad, like how it moves, guys. But like I honestly still like it. I still think it's cool, especially that that chick gets her head clipped off. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> and then it just moves on from that. Like yeah. it's just real fast, and we're done. Like, that's okay. pretty much. Yeah, I mean that's. Pretty... Oh, and then the one girl like shoves a stick into it for whatever reason. Did they like, have an oh, ending? What? Ending like where it was like left open? I don't remember. I thought so. E- I'm, I might be getting yes? confused with the other movie. The other one does for sure. I know that, yeah. Um, I th- I think it was just a happy I think ending, it was just right? A happy ending, yeah. They like blow up the house or they blow up the caves. Yeah, well, the guy fixes the switch on the lighthouse. Or oh, whatever, Dave. So oh, the Homer. Homer guy, yeah. So they're not going to get um, bombs of lethal shit dropped on them. Oh, yeah. I gotta, I gotta mention this one fucking scene I forgot that I really like. Where they were, the sheriff is like talking to Dr. Hubbard before they go off to do their own thing. Like they go, like the two girls, his girlfriend and then Dr. Hubbard go off to the caves and then he and Homer go to the lighthouse and they're, they're trying to turn the lighthouse light on because they already told Intech to send helicopters with like this murderous spray to kill the bugs. It isn't going to work anyway, but they, but the mayor had told him before he died that, that if, if it didn't work out and it wasn't, it was not going to happen that they would turn on the lighthouse to make it work again. And he, they couldn't get it to work. So they turn it on. But before they get, they split up. There's this scene where the sheriff and Dr. Hubbard are arguing about, you know, it's like, no, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll go to the caves with her. I don't want her to get hurt. And she's like, I'll fucking do it. And then she steals the car from him. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, Homer's in the other car and he's like, I don't know how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, trying to show him. And then the girl takes off with his girlfriend and he's like, women, you know, and then she's like, man, yep. in the other car. I thought it was kind of <laughs> funny. funny. But when they drive off, like Homer and the sheriff drive off, all of a sudden they get attacked by fucking bugs again on the car while they're driving. And they there's this funny scene where they're like they're playing opera music in the middle of it. Like while this chaos is happening and I, I the director talked about it. He's like, I just thought it would be really funny, like as a contrast to have like opera playing in the middle of some like stupid shit yeah but they're like they they finally fight off the fucking roaches with the fucking extinguisher in the car and and kicking them out the windows and shit like that and the fucking the music comes on again and then he's it's like and the fucking sheriff shoots it like as they're having a conversation and like homer doesn't even skip a beat he's just like continues on with his story whatever yeah oh my god that was funny i laughed pretty hard that was like the funniest scene in the movie other than like the ridiculous like creature effects i guess yeah (laughs) it's pretty good but i I think that's pretty much it for that one guys uh we did watch another movie though that uh we're going to talk about now and Brittany did that one so the next movie that we're going to be talking about is ticks which was released in 1993 the story goes A group of troubled teenagers are led by social workers on a California wilderness retreat. (laughs) 
<laughs> not knowing that the woods they are camping in have become infested by mutated blood sucking tit tits ticks <laughs> Curtis- dicks what dicks okay. what courtesy what? of cash crop marijuana growers that use a synthetic steroid to make their plants bigger and then they end up spilling it on a tick and then there you go yeah it wouldn't be a 90s movie without, without some sort of some pot weed. reference yeah, yeah. without <laughs> without some pot um this movie was directed by tony randall um he directed escape from new york a movie called the double born which looks weird and interesting hmm. kind, of, kind of never um, heard of it no. Um, and also Hellbound, Hellraiser. Yes. Two. Yes, that's the big one they put on the cover. Mm-hmm. Um, it was written by Brent Friedman, who uh, wrote Mortal Kombat Annihilation, the Dark Skies TV series, and he also did The Crow, Stairway to Heaven. Nice. Which I've never even heard of, <laughs> which is ridiculous, but... Oh, you never heard of Crow, Stairway to Heaven? No. What? No. I don't. There was not, like a I'm bunch of sequels that, that didn't have him. Yeah, I'm not big into the Crow. Like the only like I know the Crow, and then I know the Crow City of Angels, and I I like the Crow City of Angels. Well, they're gonna get a new one coming out. I know who's gonna play him. And they I forget who it yet? is. I think it's like it's not Momoa. Oh my god, I would die if it was. He's turning into the Rock, where he's gonna be in fucking like everything. Jason Momoa. Yep. Fuck yeah. Yeah, he's expected to star uh, with Corin Hardy as the director. I'm into it. I'm going to yeah. see it just because I love Jason Mellis, so I don't give a shit. All right. Everybody just wants to fuck him. They don't appreciate fuck. his art. I appreciate his art. <laughs> and I want to fuck him. Yeah. Okay. And I want to fuck his wife. So there's that. <clears throat> uh, this Jesus is- <laughs> Christ. It's a family adventure. <laughs> Moving on. <Yeah. laughs> so this movie stars little baby Seth Green. Yeah. He's like a teenager, I guess. He's not really a baby. Um, he plays Tyler. If you don't know who Seth Green is, I I don't I don't know what you get your life. You're dead to be. Like I don't know who the, where you are. <laughs> anyway, um, he is obviously creator and does voice of male multiple characters in Robot Chicken. Right. Um, he voices multiple characters in Family Guy. Um, he was in an episode of Tales from the Dark Side. Mm-hmm. He was in that movie Can't Hardly Wait, and then I love him in a movie called Sex Drive. Right. Like, because he's this smart ass fucking like um, Amish dude, and yeah, I love it. I, remember I love that. his fucking character. Like, well, he's he also did Idle Hands. Idle Hands, yeah. yeah. He's and wasn't fucking um, Carlton in Idle Hands too. I don't remember that. I mean, we did re- we did it, but I don't remember if he was in it. I think he was. Yeah. Fucking Carlton. Um, maybe no, no, no. You call him Carlton. I do call him Carlton. <laughs> We were watching this, and I was like, is that, fu- is that fucking Carlton? I was like, that's Carlton. And then Mouse comes out, and he's all doing the fucking dance. And I was like, that means it's Carlton. And I like, I instantly like fucking Googled that shit. And I'm like, it is. I don't never know how to say his last name. It's Alfonso Ribeiro? Carlton. Ribeiro? Or Carlton. Ribeiro? Ribeiro. I think so, yeah. Who plays Daryl, or I think they call him Panic. They call him Panic, yeah. Yeah, um, or Carlton. We can all call they him They call Carlton. him Panic because he doesn't. It was fine. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's, <laughs> he's a, like real stereotypical. He's like, yeah. yeah, he's so stupid. I was like, wow, that's it's just stereotypical. Like, yeah. um, He obviously is fucking Carlton from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Right. Thing. I mean, shit. He was also in Wild Wild West and another um, big TV series called In the House. Mm-hmm. And he hasn't done a whole lot of stuff. I mean, he's, no. he has, but mostly like TV. Right. Um, it also has Rosalind Allen, who plays Holly. She was in Children of the Corn 2, um, Naked Gun 33, which I'm assuming is like... Three and a, th- three three and a third. Three and a third. Yeah. yeah. 33. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Fractions. I don't do them. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was also in a, a TV series um, called Murder One, and then Murder One Diary of a Serial Killer, which I have never heard of. Um, it also has Amy Dolans, who plays Dee Dee. She was in General Hospital. 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 You're a hospital. <laughs> Jesus, do you guys miss me or what? <laughs> Shit. Anyway, <laughs> she was in General Hospital. Guess what other TV show she was in? Why? Murder, She Wrote. What do you know? The connecting like to this. Like lots of episodes. Dude, has everybody <laughs> been in fucking Murder, She Wrote? Like I literally so. everybody? Well, just about, And yeah. they didn't even have that many episodes, but. Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen it either. Oh, it, it used to be a very popular show. It was show, very yeah. popular. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. She was also in Can't Buy Me Love, and she was in Pumpkinhead 2. Nice. Okay. Uh, also has Virginia Keeney, who plays Melissa, who is in The Dentist. 
Which yes. I like that movie a like movie. a whole lot. I want yeah. to watch that again sometime soon. She, uh, she was also in an episode of Tales from the Dark Side uh, in another movie called Silk Stockings, which is not stockings like that you wear, but stockings, S-T-A-L-K-I-N-G-S. Right. Okay. Uh, also has Clint Howard. Who plays Jarvis. Yes. Clinton Howard is one of those, oh, it's that guy. The cutest kid ever. Kind of guys. That was ever. <laughs> the cutest ever. kid ever that was ever created. <laughs> um, he was, he's in Waterboy. Yeah. That's who I, I think everybody knows him from, to be Ice quite cream honest. Um, he's in Silent Night, Deadly Night 5. Right. So we'll be talking about him again at some point. Um, he's in Backdraft. He's in Feast of Fear and a metric fuck ton of other movies. And oh, yeah. he has a metric fuck ton of movies in post and pre-production right now. And in horror period. Just and in, in horror general, in general. Yeah. yeah. This movie had an estimated $2 million budget, which I'm pretty surprised by. They did a good job with $2 million with $2 in, $2 million? in that time. Yeah. Like, yeah, pretty decent. I mean, that's a pretty decent budget for an independent flick, I mean, to be yeah. honest. What were your thoughts on this movie in general? Because I know this is the first time you've seen it. Too. Yes. So uh, this is a really fun creature feature movie for me. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun to watch. It's not exactly a great movie again, but it's I would say it's almost better than the other one we watched. I preferred this one. Yeah, this was like the, the tone of it was more uh, self-aware. Uh, it was kind of tongue in cheek in a lot of ways. So but it, some of the acting, it was really bad. Uh, I was a little skeptical of this one. Uh, since it was from the from the nineties, you know, there's not a huge track record of good movies in the nineties for horror, to be honest I with you. I love the nineties. <laughs> um, you know, it definitely has that straight to video sort of flair to it that you would find a box in, and they would just pump them out during mm-hmm. the nineties, pretty much. But even if the acting isn't perfect, it's definitely way more tolerable than some of the current movies that attempt this sort of film. So I'm actually pretty okay with it. The characters didn't need to be perfect in this because really all I want to do is see the the ticks run around killing people. I don't give a fuck about them. <laughs> but it was kind of funny either way. So uh, the effects in this movie are actually really fucking good. Yeah. To be honest, I thought that it was like, I was like, how did they do this stuff? Like, I was like wondering how they made the ticks like run around and shit. Some of it was uh, puppets. Uh, I don't know if it was like I feel like they were like yeah puppets. like it were on a string or something something I don't know like it it was it was weird but it worked yeah I, I just it was really weird I, I couldn't figure out what they were doing and I try to find stuff on it and how they did it and stuff because I'd really be interested in it yeah I couldn't I couldn't find anything about it so because I was just p- personally curious but um but yeah the people just needed to be meat for the grinder of the ticks anyway so that they right. could just kill them um but watching the ticks scurry around and jump looked really great and for such a silly premise they actually didn't skimp on the physical practical effects and gore which is pretty amazing like i wasn't expecting it to be as much as it was um seeing Al- alfonso ribeiro um or carlton <laughs> we'll just carlton! Say that. <laughs> seeing Car- I, i'm sure he hates that oh, okay. uh, but seeing him in some sort of thug role was a little jarring <laughs> it really was and kind of like ridiculous and hilarious sometimes his retorts and overacting were a bit too much for me saying shit like i knew i should have brought my piece or or threatening people with a switchblade yeah like seeing that was like Watching Jim Carrey try to be a tough guy. Yeah, I wasn't into it. It was a little weird for me, you know, like, um, but I did think he looked a lot cooler than I had seen him he in anything else. Cool. I know. I was like, this must have been before Fresh Prince. It was kind of cool. Like, I was like, hey, it looks kind of like a goth kid. You know like what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was like a badass. Yeah, it was like Blade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was just funny to me. Seth Green was all right, but really not that great, to be honest. No, like, I, it was kind of bad. My panic acting up again. Yeah, he wasn't, it was like his character, I don't know if it was because it was written or he just didn't know how to act it he was still really young i think that it's just the characters that are just they're like no. just written uh, like strangely some of his know. earlier stuff before he like got it well, like, I figured like, for it out. everybody i don't just mean for him like this would have been a perfect movie for seth green if it was like six years older <laughs> or like five years older or four yeah. years older at the very least because like uh, his other movies in the 90s are really funny mm-hmm but this one, really I just it just didn't feel funny, right, though. Huh? He's not really meant to be funny, though. You in know this, what I mean? yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like the movie is, it, it is very self aware, right? And, and if he would have brought that his, some of his skills that he's done in other movies that I've seen him act way better in, I can see. He's not saying. like a he's not like a guy that's gonna win an award. Yeah, for well, anything. he's not like that 
fantastic. But he, he <laughs> definitely has a good grasp of like comedic land, like how yeah. like, to land things. He's funny. He's a funny right. guy. And some of it in this movie was just, I just didn't like it. It just, it was kind of bothersome to yeah, me. Yeah, I feel like a lot of it's just like how this is written though. I'm sure, but even still, like I really just don't think his acting in this movie is good. Oh, Whether, no, it's not. It could have been a multitude of different reasons, but it's nowhere near any of the other movies he's done. Right, you're not wrong. And I've seen, <laughs> like, and we watched one of the fucking, he was in that, the Tales from the Dark Side episode that we watched where the, the monster's under his bed. Mm-hmm. So I remember that that, that one in particular yeah. we picked. Baby Seth Green. <laughs> like, yeah. Same thing. I don't mean to rag on him, but I just expected more, I guess, maybe going in i get it i mean he wasn't that great but i don't know if it's entirely like his fault no because his like his dialogue Brittany's he mad at me is, for not liking i'm him. not mad at you i'm just saying like <laughs> I don't know, i'm She's saying like his, for, is he your hero i'm saying no i'm saying the same for like carlton too though like i'm just gonna call him carlton like i'm I sorry i didn't think the writing was that bad though like i mean yeah it's not great some though. of the deliveries though are really bad fucking like i knew i should have brought my piece i thought that was funny like, come, <laughs> oh it is funny but it's ridiculous um makes sense the the other thing i really like that they have a lot of tick tropes in this that you kind of think about you know like burning the back of a tick so yeah you know the head doesn't lodge into your body or whatever yeah and give you lyme disease or whatever the fuck i always that was always a scare for me when i was a kid like that my parents would like take a match and like burn the tick so it would let go of it's pincers be like ah, and they would let go of my fucking screaming. body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always pictured that, and I always took some it's like face. R- <laughs> <laughs> those little pincers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always took some fucking like joy out of burning them too. Who doesn't? You know what I mean? And they kind of show that in there too, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but the funny thing is, is because they they in this movie. They have some tick tropes, but not at nearly as many as I thought that there were going to be. Yeah. And and apparently, you know, it took him like an hour to figure that out, by the way, that you put fire to them later on. Like, oh, but like they did it on. in they the movie. They did it right away. Yeah, yeah but, but then it... they didn't couldn't figure it out till later. I was yeah. like, what the fuck? And then they were just like, like people were pulling them out. And, and that's the other thing. They were all worried about getting the head stuck in it one time in the movie. But throughout the whole film, people are just pulling them off. Like, oh my God, it's biting my face. <laughs> and like lips and crawling around with his creepy little fucking fingers or whatever the fuck it is. Legs, I guess. Um, <laughs> fingers. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I just because I figured. <laughs> but I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny. It's it's a whatever. It's a silly movie, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You're, ju- you're just in for it for the laughs and the ride. Yeah, again, it's like one of those things you don't want to like plot holes that you don't want to pick too much on because it'll just ruin it for but you. But I gotta make fun of it a little bit. Well, you yeah. Know? I thought the same shit. I was just like, really? You make it a big point in the beginning and then now all of a sudden it's it was, like... Yeah, it was a little weird. Forget that! Like, it's all out the window. Like, every man for himself. Pull it out however you feel. Right? However you see fit. Who gives a fuck? Overall, though, Anarchy. I mean... <laughs> I, uh, I do like this film. I think it's a good film. And if I could, uh, if it were cheaper online, it's like literally like $90 it's for a DVD find. copy. It's a Hundred and forty on Amazon for a Blu-ray copy because they had a, like a twenty-year limited edition that they put out twenty years later. So it was like in twenty fourteen. You can buy a digital copy of it on Amazon for like fourteen bucks. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, but I rented that. it. Um, wait, no, I didn't. I'm lying. I'm talking about the Nest. Just kidding. yeah. I don't think you can rent it either. You can't. Yeah. I watch ticks on YouTube. Yeah, that's the only place that <laughs> we can was, find like, it. Excellent quality, mind you. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad at all. But yeah, I would add it to my collection in a heartbeat if I could, and I hope they re-release it at some point or somebody puts it back out. Yeah, that'd be nice. It would be nice, yeah. But there's there's something good about a silly mutated tick killing people, or ticks, I should say. It's pretty ridiculous, you know, and fun. So I think if you guys can get a copy or watch it uh, on YouTube, I think it's worth it. It definitely is a pizza and beer kind of movie. So It's totally a pizza and beer just, movie. Just enjoy the ride. Maybe not eat pizza. I don't know if you want to eat Cause some of the parts I was like, oh no, <laughs> like I was like, kind of like my skin was crawling from watching it a little bit. But yeah, this one didn't bug me that much. I don't know why. I mean, if they did it, if they did a movie like this today, bug me. Oh god. <laughs> 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 if they try to do a movie like this today, it would end up being CGI fuckfest. Oh god, yeah. And I would hate ruined, it. Ruined. Yeah. Completely ruined. Same with uh, the nest. Right. Just well, they did. Ruined. They've done stuff like like CGI, like they did Eight Legged Freaks. There was an eight CGI movie. Yeah, Good which I saw Lord. in the theater for free. Actually, the movie's funny. I, I gave it that. It was it was funny. It made me laugh. But it I is. Couldn't, it's it was just it's like enjoyable. 
at the very least, yeah. you know. But uh, what about you? What do you think? So I, I, I agree with um, you stating that you liked this one a little bit better. Yeah. I, I actually preferred this one over the other one. Yeah, I did to, too. To be honest. Um, I still love the other one, though. I thought it was ridiculously funny. It's campy and it's dumb and it is the way it is. But they try and get real serious a couple times. And yeah. I'm like, but why, though? <laughs> like, they're still like they're so self-aware. But then at the same time, it's like they're not. You know what I mean? Yeah, it kind of does get weird and tonal. Like, they try to take it, like, like, they take it serious. They do. And it's, like, with all of this, like, madness going on with, like, these fucking bloodthirsty giant hyper ticks, like, they also still end up creating these side, like, villains for some reason. That makes zero sense to me. I don't feel like they needed that. Element. Well, they kind of just wanted to have a lot to work with, probably. They did, and like it's it's like a variety thing, so I understand that because I think that they felt maybe that like what they had with like the story with like the ticks and stuff wasn't enough of like a draw to keep people interested in the movie, so they inc- added this element of pot farmers, pot farmers. But yeah. the pot farmer thing explains why the well, ticks are the way that they are, right? So like yeah. that makes sense. But then they include like Sir and Jerry or whatever, which is like, actually end up being like two separate villains. To the story, but it doesn't really explain, like, why or what their purpose is. Right. Which is c- completely confusing to me. Well, so, he's just, like, the pistling, right, Jerry? Jerry is, yeah. yeah, but Sir is, like, the main, he's always combing his hair or whatever, like, <laughs> yeah. and he's super fucking irritating. <laughs> um, they're both irritating, <laughs> yeah, mind you, kinda... but I just, I didn't understand that part of the movie. Like, I don't feel like those characters were necessary because there's no, there's no reason for them to... To be a part of it. I mean, it, there is, because you always got to add the element of man versus tick, but then you throw in another person to be against man versus man. Versus man versus man, yeah. yeah well, well just, woman or whatever you want to say. I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't, I wasn't into it. I was like, I could I could do without all of this. Understandable. Side bullshit, but. Well, some of his, some of the deaths were cool because of that. Some of the deaths were cool. Yeah. It was, it was, it was interesting. Like, it was schlocky as shit, but I fucking loved it. Like, I loved every minute of this stupid movie. Which one did you watch first? Uh, This one. Oh, you did? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I watched Ticks first. Okay. Because I watched it. Mouse was like, I want to watch that one. And I was like, all right. And he had to go to bed. So he didn't get to watch uh, okay. The Nest with me. So um, I think he watched a little bit of it, but he didn't get to finish it. Okay. But yeah, I was like, you get to choose. Like, which one do you want to watch? And he's like, this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're already on YouTube. So I guess this one. I was like, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I just, I honestly, I felt like this story worked a little bit better for as stupid and ridiculous as it is like i felt like it everything jived a little bit smoother the acting i thought was stronger in this one okay shockingly but i didn't think it was great here either no but for the most part with like giving like removing like the two villains that they like create for whatever reason even though like they're decent ish characters i just didn't really like understand the purpose of them um overall the story pretty well done okay and Unique ish for this type of movie. So I haven't really ever seen anything with like killer ticks before. So what do you think of the gore and stuff? In I this? like the gore. I thought the gore was actually pretty good. There's some really cool transformation scenes in this that I was super into. Carlton has a big scene. But... Yeah, we will we'll spoil that later. Yeah, we'll get into that. Um I have a little bit of trivia. Okay. On this, not a whole lot. And I mean and I was tra- I was searching. <laughs> Cause a couple of things that I have are like from like when I've talked about this in like interviews and I was like, Where are these fucking interviews? Like in which I can't find anywhere, which pisses me yeah, off. Yeah, that's what I was wondering too, because I looked it up out of curiosity and I was like, so I'm mad. Like, yeah. Ugh. Anyway, um this movie was shot in five weeks. Yeah, okay. Which oh. is pretty quick. Yeah. Um but I also I feel like that's kind of standard. That's longer point. than the other movie. One of the Q and A's that they that they had at Dragon Con in two thousand and eight, they talked to Amy Dolans, and she said that one of one of her main memories of making this film was all of the fake blood which would stick to her skin and in her hair. Right. And she just could not fucking get it out, <laughs> like yeah. to save her fucking life. And she's like, and I was trying so fucking hard to find this interview because I wanted to find, like, or just this Q and A to see if they asked any other like questions related to this movie and I can't find it and it was stressing me out so if anyone finds it please share it with me because I want to check it out I want to see if they asked any other questions well it might have been under one of the other movies that she was doing at the time or something yeah I, I think so like something else that she was doing around that time frame obviously and then some super fan in the audience was like oh ticks ticks 
Yeah. She's like, okay. Um, the movie was actually released internationally under the title Tix, and the film was br- briefly test marketed to the United States um, theaters in 93 under the title Infested. Mm, yeah. But they changed it back to Tix for video and TV, um, and it became a minor cult classic under that name. So it's just kept that way. And I, I kind of prefer it under Tix instead of Infested. And oh, I feel yeah. Like Infested works. I, they have another movie called Infested, I think, now. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. Um, the special effects creator Doug Beswick wrote the original screenplay two decades earlier under the title Cycle of Blood. Yeah. And I'm like, that sounds like a period. <laughs> well, you know what it probably was? He was probably trying to take it super serious. I think so. Yeah, because like, that sounds like one of those. Super serial, you guys. Yeah. Super serial. Um, and then another like conversation that was had about this was in, on David Letter- Letterman in 1999. He had Seth Green on, and he poked fun about the film during this like appearance that he had with him. And I'm sure that I can probably find that episode to just find it. But I feel like he's I'm telling you, he probably like, didn't even like his role in it. He probably I'm just sure think he, he did it. They was like bad acting. Yeah, I mean, he pokes fun at it, so I'm sure he's like poking fun at him in general because he just wasn't great. Right. Um, and then they actually have four full minutes of footage that were shot and completed that ended up getting completely removed from the film before the final release, and supposedly it's never been seen in any of the releases, so it's not actually out. Like, they just kept that shit under wraps completely, and I'm curious as to why. I want to fucking know. Like, why is this completely under wraps? Why have you not shared this with anybody? Like, you know how sometimes they have, like, maybe it's lost? Because in a lot of of films, like, are completely lost film that they never shared that they cut for whatever reason for time or for, or um, to get... Uh, more like a better rating so they could actually like right. appeal to wire audiences or whatever but then they've lost the film well the thing is is that back when these movies were coming out it was on cassette you mm-hmm. know vhs cassette and b8 beta before that but people weren't interested in the extras and audio tracks behind the thing until yeah. it, it started coming out on laser disc and DVD, and those were when they started adding all those extras, and then sometimes they would have these double cassettes where you could actually hear, like, see the feature read or mm-hmm. the making of and stupid shit that they would add uh, as a secondary disc. So it would be this like bulky, a yeah, like one of those bulky special edition ones, and then they became more popular, and then it was demanding like that they needed to be in there. The the worst uh, of all the movies that I always think of in the horror genre that lost film uh, was all of the scenes from Event Horizon. Mm-hmm. That's the one that everybody, everybody every, knows every year, that. man. Yeah, it kills and, it, you. and it's like it's like watching your child die over again. It is. It's like I want to see that because all the coolest things were in those fucking in those moments. Scenes, yeah. yeah. Literally like all the fucking fucked up Hellraiser space yeah. monsters, like that shit is in there. All I can think of is like what in gone. the Sam Neil is going what on. What in the Sam Neil is going on in here? <laughs> I still say that. All the time. I get like We very, coined that phrase very, by the way. Yeah, you're all Fucking welcome. <laughs> you always royalties if you use it. Sam Neill doesn't what? though. Sam Neill doesn't. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to derail. Come on the show. Yeah. <laughs> the Sam Neill. Uh, yeah. So, what were some of your like spoilery scenes um, that you have for this one? I already mentioned the one where they burn the tick and it flares up and sputters out yeah there was but but there is that i'll I'll mention it's just a minor thing that i just have a gripe with they burn the tick in a piece of paper because seth green's like yeah they're the vampires of the of the of nature (laughs) Uh, the animal kingdom or whatever the fuck he said because technically uh ticks are not insects they're arachnids right yeah they are arachnids um they burn the tick the paper flares up and tyler drops it tyler is seth green's character what I want to know is why the fuck is Panic wiping his face after that? Oh, I think he's supposed to pretend like he got blood on him. I know, but like, what? It makes no sense. Well, that explodes. thing was so tiny. Yeah, but it, it explodes. And I think he that's what he's trying to say, like that he felt like something got on him or whatever. Because he says something about it, too. I don't know. It just seemed really weird that like, I don't know. No, I get what you're saying. It was like it's overacting. It was, it was super small. Nothing actually got on his face. Like it totally was overacting. But it, I like when they pop. It was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. Well, hmm. What about you? Do you have anything little minor things that you want to point out? Um, let's see. I like when they go fish, like the two girls go fishing. And then because I didn't feel like it was really relevant to the story, like all that much. OK. Um, but it was still kind of a, a cool, funny scene. They go fishing and it's like this quiet chick that never talks. And then her and this other girl are like bonding. 
and they're fishing in this like shit pond that's like super short, like or um super short. <laughs> Small, shallow, <laughs> shallow, shallow, okay, yeah. super short pond. You guys, um, <laughs> it's, it's very short. <laughs> I must keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very shallow and it's small and it's gross and it's dingy and dinky and disgusting. Anyway, okay. it's ba- like basically like what you would see it's mosquitoes like swarming all over right. with like, algae and shit. It's disgusting. That's a movie we'll do later. Mosquitoes, mosquito, Ugh. or mosquito man, mosquito man. Yeah, gross. <laughs> um. Anyway, so they're fishing and the line gets caught on something. And so the fucking quiet bitch is like, well, go get the net. Get the net. Quick, it's going to come. Like, and she's like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, it's all the way over there. I've got this little dinky fucking like net that you would use for like a ho- at home aquarium. I'm not remembering or this Or whatever. Scene. And then she and she's like, well, get in the water. Go get it. Like, get in the pond or whatever. Get in the lake. And I'm like, no. Fuck you. Why the fuck would I go in that nasty ass lake to go and get your fish, bitch? And then she goes in there like an idiot. She goes in with the net and then she she's like, pull on the line, pull on the line. Why? Oh, now and I remember. And then she yanks, like she ends up yanking on the line and then all of a sudden she surfaces the sheriff. <laughs> yeah, the, that's the, dead. The bald sheriff. And then you can't, I mean, everyone else can see that it's the fucking sheriff because he's in his uniform. Yeah. <laughs> but then they don't discover that it's the sheriff until they like have backed out of ran out of the lake and then stumbled like sat down and ended up next to his like poorly covered up police car, which she later calls a jeep, which is not a fucking jeep. It's like a just a regular police car. Right, yeah. And she's like, "Oh, that we found his jeep." And I'm like, it's a car. Spoiler alert, it wasn't the it's ticks. Not a, it's, it wasn't the ticks. It was the two random fucking, like, <laughs> <laughs> and the, the two random dudes that are also now everyone's enemy. I don't know. Stupid. Yeah, that, that was a but pretty That scene silly. was funny, because I was just like, what, what the hell? Like, why are you screaming at her to go in this nasty-ass lake? And then, obviously, it makes sense, because then they surfaced it. I thought she was going to, like, bring a tick out of the water or something, and yeah. it was going to, like, sponge well, on Well, that's her face, what they like, wanted alien. to do, is make you think that, oh, there's more going on. Right. And, like, it's literally, I was expecting, like, an alien moment, like, <laughs> to, like, jump on her face or whatever. When the tick, like, appears, like, comes at him or whatever from between, like, the boiler or wherever the fuck he's oh, in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Todd Howard's the character, time. the Jarvis, I think that's his Jarvis. name. Jarvis, yeah. yeah. Fucking hilarious. Dude, that was a funny part, too, because, like, he's, like, Todd Howard's character gets uh, the, the tick sack that falls on his face and knocks him out, and then he wakes up, and, like, they're all inside his body and he's shit. Like, shooting. they've nested inside his body. Yeah. And he wakes up, and, and, and like, they string that over, like, three different spots scenes, yeah. yeah like three four different mm-hmm. seeds because he pops up a fourth time later on but the funniest that like that was one of my favorite scenes i'll just mention it we can mix yeah, just, them in we'll together just get into it yeah. yeah there was a scene where todd howard's like screaming in one of the i think it's the what was her name the dd is it dd i thought it was Dee-Dee. like the it's the prissy girl that's there with the, the preppy dude. chick yeah yeah, yeah yeah she's all screams uh or she like sees him and she freaks out and he screams he grabs her and he's like i'm infested i'm infested and then his face on the right pops great and it just giant tick, tick flies out of yeah it. and like goes on her neck or whatever it was awesome dude but yeah his character was fun in this movie i really liked him in this i thought I thought Even it was though he's like not really in it a lot, but then like the little bits that he is are really funny. Yeah, he's the guy that creates the chemical to help make the pot grow faster. Yeah, it's like a synthetic steroid. Right. So, and that's what sends the steroid into the tick universe, and they start yeah, fucking. It lands on a like an egg sac or just on a tick or whatever, and it. Yeah, ends I didn't up, like, understand that. What was some, that? I think it was this egg sac or whatever for like the ticks. I think that's what it lands. That's on. what it, they were all started and then, pouring like, all out. All of them within it were now like covered in this steroid and then they started growing and growing and growing and then I don't know how they reproduce. So but. these two movies have so much in common here. <laughs> they really One, do. they have pincers, both of them. And two, they have sacks everywhere. So there's like sacks. They just put sacks on the back but of these trees. Ones are just and tiny balls. Yeah, they're like tiny ball sacks. Single balls. <laughs> but they they, and they're gross. They these things are fucking fast and scary, dude. Like yeah. that was like really cool. Like watching them scurry across the ground they're was like, like really yeah, but it was like really fast, and I was like, "What the fuck? No!" Mm-hmm. Well, they're on steroids, so yeah. This movie also kills a dog. Oh, that's right. And yeah, a hamster. Or that's a, true. A mouse. Mouse. Yeah. It kills a mouse first. Yeah. In the first one, in the yeah. nest. In the nest. Yeah, yeah. There was uh there was another scene that that I just want to bring up. Like one of the first scenes where the kids find out that there's ticks. 
Do you remember that scene? They were like, she, Tyler's like walking with Melissa, the the mm-hmm. fucking camp counselor's or the daughter, the, yeah. the daughter. Uh, and he says, don't move, there's something on your back. And she's like reluctantly turns to find one of those large sacks we were just talking about on her back. And uh, its claws are like dug into her back and you're like thinking to yourself, like, how does she not know? And then he's like trying to pull it off and he's like, here, let me pull it off, you know? stick. He's, yeah, and, it, and it's like fucking like attacking the stick and shit like as he's fucking. Hilarious. And I was like kind of silly, but it, it's just funny. It just like runs off. Yeah, it just disappears, like, with the stick. But I just thought it was funny that she's, like, screaming, like, oh, God, it hurts. Like, well, no shit. Yeah. Well, you should have known it was on your back. They kind of explain that, though, later. Because it has a neurotoxin that it releases. Like, and oh, I think that's actually, when it like, bites. actually happens with Yeah, because you trip a, out. There's a neurotoxin. Yeah, because then they start having trips later, like, acid trips and shit later on LSD. And um, I think it's the... I think it was the vet chick or the doctor or whatever that like explains that. I can't remember who it was, but Ugh. somebody explains it later. So they release this like neurotoxin when they bite you, so that way you don't re- le- you don't realize that they're there. So then they can latch on and stay longer. But obviously, if now she knows that something's on her, so now she's gonna her brain's gonna tell her that she's feeling something there, and then it's not attached at that moment anymore. So now she's gonna feel it. But yeah. Ugh. So oh, I, was, I, I thought the same thing because I was like, "How would you not notice some giant ass fucking bug attached to you, you crazy bitch?" And then they explained it later, and I was like, "Oh yeah, you're right." <laughs> <laughs> That's how it makes sense. How dogs get like just infested with them so quickly because they, they don't feel them. Another thing that, by the way, that they both have too is people with guns. Yeah. Like, what's the point? I don't know. I know that they had to and have it in them. the first one for the shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, I know. There's yeah, there's no, like, there's no purpose. There's no like, what are you going to do? <laughs> right. <laughs> Although I guess you could probably shoot the ticks a little bit easier in than the sack. The... Yeah. yeah. Just shoot them in the blood shoot sack. Shoot them in the sack. <laughs> shoot them in the sack. <laughs> it's still kind of funny, though. Square in the sack. Honestly, like one of my favorite scenes, I'm just going to say it, when Carlton transforms. Yes. That's a big one. Dope. Yeah, we've we've gone just, we're just going there at this point. Yeah, no, go ahead. I mean, trans- I'll, 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 I'm going to backtrack one, one of mine. That's fine. Him transforming into this, like, giant tick monster thing is fucking excellent. He's, like, seizuring. He's, like, ah! Yeah, he's, like, yeah, he's, like, seizuring for a while. This is a, he's already dead, mind you. Like, he's he's dead now. Like, he's been bitten so many times by these fucking things, and then also he got shot by that guy. Right. Out in the forest or whatever, somewhere in the woods, and then he's found his way back in to the cabins and stuff and then he just like dies among everybody and I'm like okay and then later yeah he starts to like have seizures and shit and they're like no my god <laughs> like <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous and then he starts to transform into this giant tick monster so like the tick legs grow out of his legs like at his kneecaps right yeah I thought that was cool and then cool. like the tick legs grow out of his arms like through his hands and shit and then his head suddenly splits open like right down the center and then, all the way down to his body down to his scrum diddly ums down to his scrum diddly ums his dead scrum diddly ums big old dick <laughs> anyway but yeah that scene was fucking cool you can watch just that scene too. That was a really people. that was cool. That was like I like that they added the big tick because yeah, it just made it so much better. It didn't really last that long, no, uh, and it was kind of pointless. But it kills the bad guys, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, quite honestly, that's like my favorite scene. I thought it was really cool. Um, there was a scene where the with the dog. You talk about the dog getting attacked <laughs> by a fucking tick. <laughs> like the, yeah, this little tick charges, and the scream you hear from the dog. When it attacks it, it is fucking terrifying. Yeah, it was awful. Like, it was like, I was like, Jesus, that's not even a fucking dog. It was like, (laughs) like that. I was like, what the fuck is that? So I feel like somebody just made the noise or something. Yeah. But it was really kind of heartbreaking to hear it yeah, and I also it. like what the fuck at the same time so but it was kind of comical uh but you find it it's all shaking and convulsing you know and then of course you, that's where you see carlton cry and yeah. <laughs> uh, which is probably one of the better acting scenes that he had in the whole movie because mm-hmm. it was legit yeah 
Um, but they take the dead dog to the vet, and the, and they need they can't find out you know any blood in the dog. Like the they're sticking needles in him to extract blood to see what happened to him, as if it's you know been drained by something. Spoiler alert: it's a fucking tick. <laughs> <laughs> but one, only one tick, by Just the way. One, yeah. Uh, which it would be the size of the dog if it had drank that much fucking blood. I would assume, right? You think so? Unless it's got like extremely high metabolism, it just goes through it so quick. I have no idea. But um, there's a cat in this neighborhood that has this gigantic ball on its back, Ew. and I wonder if that's a tick. You know well, what I mean? Probably. It's freaky. Anyway, but um, but it's funny. Like she finally stabs it in it and sticks into the dog, and she pulls blood out, but she stuck it into the tick and, in its back, and it's all like running around with the needle in its back like scurrying around and uh it latches onto tyler's face i was like ew it's in his fuck mouth off. yeah the foot's in his mouth yeah <laughs> it's little hands no i'm kidding his little hands, his little hands. <laughs> uh, i don't know i thought it was a cool touch to i do love that, that scene yeah. actually that seems funny that was a cool scene i laughed my ass off but it was also gross with the little fucking tick feet in the <laughs> mouth i was like oh well, and it's like we don't have that many scenes in this um, that we wanted to bring up, but it was overall more enjoyable, I think. Yeah, it was. It flows than, better. Than the Nest. But I still really like the Nest, guys. Like, I still think you should check it out, especially if you're an 80s fan and you like to see, like, weird uh, attempts at gore and shit like that. Just weird shit in general. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want to see roaches, like, tear apart, like, well, sort of. The aftermath, they don't really show it. Right. If you liked Piranha or Jaws, you probably like like this in roach format in roach uh, format. yeah the nest but the ticks i gotta give it to them that the, the way that they made those ticks move and like the how funny it was like i feel like the movie could have been a bit be- better yeah than it was if everybody would have delivered it better somehow I like i don't know it just it fe- that's why i kept saying like you would expect to see a seth green movie and go oh this is gonna be one of those silly dumb fucking funny movies right you know like idle hands or something where he kind of really nails the character of being silly Mm -hmm. but in this movie he's too straight laced and i don't think he really shines and the only time you really get some some acting that is enjoyable is from carlton acting like a badass all the fucking time So I keep saying Carlton, I'm such an yeah, asshole, you're but whatever. I did that. That, <laughs> that was me. It was entirely me. <laughs> I apologize for nothing. So obviously we would pick the Ticks movie over this. Yeah. So uh and no big surprise there. But have you guys seen these movies? Would you recommend these movies? What do you think of these movies? Like which would you prefer over the two that we just talked about? And uh, as a heads up, normally we do a grave plots at this point in time. That is a lot of work for us at this time. And I want to get in some of the, the holiday movies before the end of the year here. Uh, and also catch up on movies that I want to watch for 2018 for our top of the 2018. We're going to do top five or 10, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, runner ups or whatever the fuck. So stick around for that. But we're going to be doing some horror holiday horror movies that are pretty popular that have it's one of the larger franchises in the scene of horror in the holidays if you can figure it out you're a goddamn genius whatever but we're going to be doing the whole franchise for the next two episodes so we are going to basically minus one yeah minus the first one uh because we've already done that in our catalog from the past and uh, we'll we'll link you guys to that in the episode when we do that. But yeah, get your holiday undies out and put them on because we're going to fucking get them all wet with fucking blood. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, guys, thanks so much for coming by this week. I'm glad to have Brittany back here. Uh, it's nice to have you back, Brittany. Thanks. It's uh, nice to be back. Yes. I, it better be. You're, I'll <laughs> fucking kill you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, oh my God. I, I am glad that you're back. So it's nice to have you back. But guys, stick around. We'll be back next week. And as always, stay weird, monsters. Tune in every Monday from Brand.